part two of the overall introduction to Earthistan. Uh, the first part rounded up with helicopter into Earthistan, and uh, but then <laughs> the creative inspiration grew, and uh, there were more stories to tell. So uh, that grew into uh, a beautiful uh, passages about uh, the love affair of. Earthman and Cleopatra in the Greek Islands, 1968, yeah, told in a languid, sexy way. No hurry. Yeah, those Dutch naked hippie chicks, um, uh, retro pussy and the holy man, yeah. Well, then, you know, after about, you know, eight or nine hours of that. I, I just like, let's get everybody to Istanbul. We need a break. Get out of the uh, Catholic, uh, I mean, the uh, Orthodox Christian and psh, get over to Islamic culture. We need a break. It's uh, too much of one flow. Put you to sleep, basically. So in there, uh, Pasha performs the hippie history of hashish. Uh, in its entirety. And, uh, you know, this leads to uh, Asha and Safo, mm -hmm. hippie, free love, pornography. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, so uh, the, the final chapter of their drifting towards Turkey, by this one <laughs> chapter, it solves a lot of problems as a storyteller. I put a lot into how they eloped from Lindos and many, many hours later, and then I couldn't take it anymore and you couldn't either, so we did a little flip over to Istanbul. Thank you, Pasha, for entertaining us in the Sphinx of the Salon over there. And let's finish off uh, the, the Cleo Earthman thing. Last island, Patmos. They're gonna take the ferry up from there over to Turkey and then hook up to Cappadocia really helps Sphinx, you know, with the decaying corpse of his girl. Overland luxury buses with Pasha to uh, Herat and Kandahar. So, uh, well, what happens was uh, also uh, there's a chapter called Namaste, my first gurus, and that's a reflection. It comes through in my life about the death of my first gurus my mother and my father. How fortunate is that? You know, I just started out from life with absolute 100% compassion. I was so guided. Well, they died 27 days apart and there's a soul journey uh, involved there, a mystical soul journey about reuniting the spirits of my parents. It's way beyond the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing. And that leads into uh, the next year of all of this previous stuff was 67, 68. The next year, uh, Earthman is exploring on his own and he ends up in an extremely remote Tibetan monastery in the Himalayas. This is the beginning of the book. There are no foreign people and explains his epiphanies, the, the, the appearance of the goddess, and uh, the scene in, in Kathmandu in 1969, the acid parties, the hash extravaganzas, just the, the world freedom of it all. You'll hear about that all. And then, oh, I get busted. <laughs> Earthman gets busted in Kathmandu for what? Not, not going to fight in Vietnam. Oh, I won't get my passport. And oh, Woodstock's happening. Where's Earthman? He's in the tombs of Manhattan, prison underground. Busted by the FBI at JFK because he didn't go fight in Vietnam. Well. This is a good story, imprisoned during war. So you heard a lot of spiritual this, spiritual that, blah, blah, blah. But how does it work in the real world? In the world of prisons? In the world of torture? Yeah. 
back roads, living in a tent, in a parking lot. How does it work there, spiritual force? Well, prism and during Woodstock. Yeah, that's a good that's a good meditation. Yeah, and then you know it goes into the divine angels. I've been inner guided uh, since a, as a young man. Lived in a cave. I, I let the angels have room to flap their wings. And I've been guided to uh, these esoteric realms. The Tibetan monastery was my launch pad. And I saw the whole earth. You know, these, these, uh, these people go up in space for a few minutes. They look down on earth. They get, get what they call this earth effect, this earth global effect. Well, I had that right back in 1969. I didn't need no satellite or Jeff Bezos or any galactic up your ass whatever. Ego trip. I, I just lie every night. Look at the whole earth. I had that earth effect and it affected me and I acted on it too. So I went to the American Embassy in India as a 24 year old and I renounced my nationality legally. None of this head chip. Oh, yeah, world citizen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. You got to do this stuff. You got to give up something to get something in your life. Hope you learn that sooner than later. What did I give up? I gave up a passport. I gave up ability to travel. I gave up the freedom from fear of being busted and imprisoned. Yeah, I gave up a lot, but I got a lot. I got a whole world. I got a whole planet. I got Earth people. I started a movement. That day in July, when I was 24 years old, now we're celebrating the 50th anniversary, July 2021. Yeah, my, my trip's still standing. Well, there's some fun stories that go through there. The hippie lifestyle in Bali 50 years ago. <laughs> oh, let go again, hitting Tahiti. 1890s. Oh, Every, everyone bare breasted. Uh, no tourists. Oh. Yeah, Bali 50 years ago. Oh, Borneo, Malaysia, Thailand. Yeah, 50 years ago. Go through there. Huh? And then, uh, yeah, I... I uh, I transcend you know, my whole upbringing, my whole previous identity as a national. I go global, in fact, cosmic. And um, it disorients me. I walk out of the embassy. I have no papers. I have about 200 bucks in my fold in my sarong, and I'm, I'm disoriented. I want to talk to somebody I respect. And, well, fortunately, Ram Dass is living in the Himalayas right then right now with Neem Karoli Baba. So I go up and, and hang out with Ram Dass and Neem Karoli to get my bearings, okay? And, yeah, Ram Dass, huh? Oh, where are the planetary poets with vision enough? And this leads me into the final uh, passage uh, the hippie history of Go and Kathmandu from interviews with Eight Finger Eddie himself while he was still alive. I have the best photos of him. I have the best interviews of him. And I'm just giving you this on a silver platter for free. <laughs> you could buy the book, but most of my friends don't have $44 in tax and all that. So you can get the, the video book. is absolutely free. I only copyright it so other people don't despoil it. Deface it. I, I keep it as a protection against you know, like temple raiders or people who get off on destroying temples and pujas and rituals and so on. And finally, like the 50-year history of the earth people. I mean, I didn't think this whole thing up by myself. I build my earth people movement on the foundation of the world citizen movement, which was started in 1948 by Gary Davis. He just re re recently passed away. Uh, he's world citizen number one. He he absolutely gave up citizenships, the whole idea about it, and chose to be a voluntarily stateless person his whole life. Yeah, well, then 27 years went by, you know, and I, you know, shouted out my Earth People Declaration at the embassy in Madras in 1971. So from 
Gary Davis's point of view, and he came over, we're talking about hanging out at my house in Bolinas in San Francisco, issuing world passports to my friends. Uh, he was world citizen number one, I'm world citizen number two. Are you world citizen number three? We're kind of waiting for some millennial, somebody to step up. I mean, the younger generation should hitch up their leader hosen and come on, you know? Well, well, there's the 50-year hi history. So it goes all, it details everything right up to our 50th anniversary and how we're building an earth temple here in Hawaii, beautiful land, old growth land, Oceanside, and we're building an earth temple like Alex Gray, Alex and Alex and Gray. We believe the earth people community, physical manifested temples are important. So this is Earth Temple Hawaii, and it's been fun to you know, conclude on that. Uh, and finally, my live stage show. Uh, I work, it's called There Are No Foreign People, and this is my stage show I do before live audiences. This one was filmed by Tigo. He won an Academy Award uh, special effects for Star Wars, the editor. Yeah, Academy Award. This is, a, it took us three years and four months of close collaboration to produce 90, or no, 59, 59 minutes. We gotta keep it under an hour or we'll lose everybody's attention. Yeah, 59 minute documentary. Uh, there are no foreign people. It's fun, it's a stage show. There's laughs, there's music, there's other acts. So if you can just like give yourself an hour uh, in this whole 64 hour madness of creativity, Click on my live stage show. You'll get the whole juice of the story. Well, that's it for me. Um, I'm looking forward to shaving, really. I get caught in character for months at a time. And I can't. It's tropic. It is warm here. I mean, it looks look kind of like I'm a pundit and I know something. But uh, I'm more fun then I am smart. You want to have a good time in Hawaii? Hook up with me. I know every beach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And every spice of life to open your eyes. It's a miraculous profundity of living right now. Spark it up, juice it up. It's brief. It'll be over before you know it. Finally, I'm, I've organized my career, my artistic career, so that I will peak seven years after I'm dead. Yeah, it really takes a lot of the pressure off. You know? Nobody following me around, getting on my nerves. I'm just like the old guy with the rainbow umbrella who walks a lot to put to the village. Yeah, leave me right there. Oh, this whole big earth temple thing? Yeah, okay. Well, can I be the house sitter? If none of you groovy millennials are around anymore? We can make a bonfire, huh? And the full moon over there, huh? Yeah, yeah, peak seven years. So I figure I got, you know, my parents passed. It's 81. I'm 74. So, yeah, I'd probably make it to, to, to what mom and dad did. And then another seven years after that. So uh, then you know, my whatever gift I have, it will come. It will well up. Truth outs itself eventually. And it's been a blessing not to well, seek the fruits of my labor. It's the Bhagavad Gita thing. Just do the service. Just have the fun of the creativity. Don't be looking at all the, oh, what can I get out of this? What can I get out of that? That spoils it. You know, it was a beautiful fruit. Pick the fruit, eat the fruit. Enjoy it in the moment. I'm, you know, I'm free. Uh, fame, money, whatever, get out of here. <laughs> I'm free. And I hope these uh, guidebooks and, and videos will help you be free also. Goddess, you think I've gone off enough this morning? Fatima, good thing you and Goddess get along. Would you boil some water? I need a shave. Clean up my act. <laughs>